Zipper in here really quick. He should already be in the server. I think he is. I don't, I don't know. Thought he was. What the fuck? Maybe not? The hell does his name start with? Matilda? That makes this very easy. Oh no, yeah, he is in here. We're still waiting on more players too. Oh. I have to reach around my mic because I'm not rich enough to afford a boom yet. That's when I get richer. All right, this matchup's actually super easy to look at because the teams are right next to each other on the sheet. But I believe this is Donger's CDL introduction match. Do uh, it's Guam's first match back after being banned for two seasons or however many seasons, I think one season. It might've been one season, I can't remember. This is a Guam captain and drafted team from the start. And we're starting off with them. I believe Murtank is also in there. Where is Murtank actually? Let me ask. It's because the soundproof Turtle King is, I think, filling in for Murtank. The fuck is this logo? Oh my god. Fucking degenerates. Okay. Okay. So it's Turtle King. The draft sheet's just not updated. Let me ping Badger. Tank not on Guam's team. I've been bamboozled, fooled, ridiculed. So Turtle King is instead of Murtank. And then you got Shrek. The King, which is Martin, if I remember correctly. I need to grab my notebook. One second, boys. I should also probably advertise. That's another bad thing that I don't do often enough. Uh, bam. Wait. Wait, what? This is Guam V. Martin. Okay. So we're good. I'm good. I don't do any fancy thing for my chat message. Okay. So yes, uh, Martin is the king. We'll just say Martin. Hopefully, Cueve, Cueve, Queven, Queven, Shrek, Nolagon, and Dago. Dago is actually captaining, which is surprising. Let me move my mic back forward. Sorry about that. Dago is actually captaining then, though. You might as well stick with the champ. And uh, Guap's not even drafting for trap waifus. What is he? Alright. We'll get our co-caster in like three minutes, apparently. That's a Guam hero. That's totally a Guam hero. It's kind of... I, I forget the exact changes that hero's gone under two. I totally wish there was a better way to look at uh, game updates. Because I still feel like it's useful to look at patch notes right now. Um... And I don't even think this is gonna be that useful to look at. So we'll we'll actually pull it up in another window just so I can look at it. But at least it looks like my stream is working, so. Dota 
Hopefully there's a well formatted version of the patch here. All right, Vengeful Spirit. We are gonna fall so far behind. Uh, vision duration increased, the aura got reworked, and it now provides plus attack range and primary attributes to player units. Um, Nether Swap now works against invulnerable slash sleeping targets. Agnum Scepter got reworked. Um, now fears enemies when you land in the area of 700 for two seconds. That is fucking amazing. Okay. Okay. And I forget the whole spell immunity change thing, but... Uh, that's like a big read into that I never actually did. Maybe Zipper can explain that. But yeah, Venomancer, which is another good hero that I think got nerfed in the last patch. Uh, I think it got nerfed in the last patch. Yeah, Poison Sting got the damage reduced by 6 at max level, but the scaling is somewhat the same. Oh, no, it scales less too. And the health regen is kind of destroyed. Oh, it reduces health regeneration. Okay. So yeah, it's okay. It's still good in lane. Reducing health regen by 15% is still fantastic. And I think you put that off lane. Easy harass for an enemy carry. They have to continually ferry out tangos. It's not too bad because everybody has their own carrier now can easily play around that. Slardar 2 is a pretty solid hero the last few patches. Uh, let me actually go look at Slardar again because I don't think too much got changed about Slardar. And yes, it's been like two weeks since the patch, but whatever. Slithering Crush AOE increased on the Aghanims. And we'll see if he's been changed since. Nope, that's it. Slaughter is a very boring hero, apparently, but still good. Especially if you can get that uh, Agnums very early on. Uh, Shadow Demon, Demonic Purge now deals damage through spell immunity. So, again, just something that's been good for a long time, and it's like, if you have somebody that plays it, you might as well continue to play it. <laughs> Tusk is a hero that I haven't seen for a while. And I don't even know if he got changed. Base movement speed increased. Base HP regen increased. Walrus Kick now deals damage through spell immunity. And that is about it, except for a couple talent changes. Ice Shards cooldown uh, now knocks off 8 seconds at level 20. So still pretty decent. Uh, level 10 right talent reduced from 40% XP gain to 20%. Wow. That's uh, actually pretty big. So we'll see what they're going to go for on the other end. I think they have their offlane set up. Um, especially with the Venge changes, the Veno is going to be very strong. Um, able to farm up in lane. And the combo is just going to work, I think. Oh, did we get a double cast? I don't think we're... I'm not double casting, I don't think. I think we might have gotten a double cast somewhere. But it's alright, I might be casting uh, more games tomorrow. We'll see. It would be beneficial, I think, because people can actually watch on off days. So, post humus streams, I guess. Or post uh, post action streams, we can call them. The Doom pick. How did this hero get changed? So many things are just coming out right now. All right, Devour Max Creep level rescaled from three four five six to four five six six. Cooldown reduced on Devour. Gold bonus or no? Cooldown rescaled from. It doesn't scale down anymore. It's just a solid seventy seconds. Gold bonus rescaled from Devour. So the gold bonus gets doubled at level 4. And digest duration now matches cooldown rather than 80 seconds. 
And doesn't the digest duration... They, that must be a long time ago. I haven't played Doom in a while. Scorched Earth. Duration got changed. Uh, PAs. I'll, I'll get to PA, I guess. Uh, duration rescaled on Scorched Earth to just 16 seconds now at the first level. It's base all the way across. Um, speed got increased. Damage got rescaled. Is that their mid hero, honestly? Unless this is a this could be a four Venomancer, and then you throw Doom in the same lane, and you can be very aggressive, especially around those five minute outposts. If you can just force the other team out of the lane around four minutes thirty seconds, four minutes forty five seconds, Doom is a really good hero, getting some early farm in order to uh, deal with heroes early on. The Naga is fantastic. They have the Venge combo too, so they are gonna have the swap there if they want to try and solo one hero. Uh, Phantom Assassin barely got changed, and I don't think she got touched. Nope. So pretty much untouched PA, but uh, still really good hero, able to farm. Uh, blur Evasion got increased by 5% at level 20. And then you also got Naga Siren, who I believe is more of a support now. Or at least slightly. No, it's still about the same. The Agi gain got reduced. But uh, solid hero, I think. The farming is just crazy with uh, Naga. And like I said, they have the Venge combo too. If they want to try and pick off like a Slaughter or a PA without uh, having the Shadow Demon counter. Can bode really well for them. They also have a very good amount of team fight. So I think... What's going to happen to uh, Doggo's draft or Martin's team here is at any time they want to fight for outposts, they really can't show up. Although outposts did get nerfed, I think, in the last patch, uh, outposts got nerfed, I believe. Yes, Outpost XP reduced from 25 per minute to 18, which is, I think a really good change. So they aren't as big anymore. They're still very big. But uh, you aren't going to be like stomped anymore, I guess. Or the game isn't over as soon as you lose um, two of the Outposts one time. Because that XP advantage you have after taking both Outposts for a five minute interval is crazy. It's insane, and the game is pretty much over before it even started. Just what kind of sucked about the patch. Early on, and it's kind of been a back and forth patch. I, I think the game's in a decent spot now, especially with the, the changes to the outpost, and we're still looking at neutral items. I mean, who knows? In like three months, we might not have any neutral items left with the rate that they have been disappearing. <laughs> so we'll see. Fun, fun. Tiny. Uh, tree grab building damage reduced and I think we got the tree ban right no tree ant has not been banned I'm kind of surprised we didn't see him picked Instead we got a couple puck is pretty annoying to deal with I'm surprised they banned it since they have a doom to work with um, Especially since doom feels like a hero that's not gonna get banned out You could just be like okay if they want to pick puck we can deal with it we can fight into it, but now that you have the Doom into a PA, into a Slaughter, uh, to very good, well, I guess Slaughter is not as great, but you still have it into a PA or a Tusk. Tusk can be there for the save, but uh, to completely nullify an enemy carry, I still like uh, Soundproofs, I think that's the actual name. I still have to check, yeah. I still like Soundproof Draft a little bit better here. And I'm not even sure if Soundproof has experience in previous pro leagues, not someone that I've encountered before. But potentially, yeah, RD2L Season 18. They played in, okay. So yeah, I, I haven't played with Soundproof. And then the Razor pick, which Razor seems like such a gimmicky hero now that people are just picking because it's like, oh, well, you can hit people so much faster. And it feels great. But uh, 
I, I don't know if it's really worked out. I feel like I played against Razor in a couple matches this patch, and I actually haven't actually played in 7.23c yet. So, um, I don't think Razor got changed, though. I think Razor's pretty much been untouched ever since the damage sap changes. Um, and I'm terrible at memorizing all the items, so every time an item drops, I'll probably go over uh, exactly what it does, because I never memorize exactly what it does. Yeah, I think Zipper is somehow still AFK. Might have died. But he can just jump in any anytime, anytime. Anytime we are good. I should have filled up my water bottle again too, but I say that every week. Luckily, I remembered to execute my observer config file before the cast actually started this time. So, impressive work from Karate there. But yes, I forgot to say who's playing what. Turtle King is on your Venomancer. It is going to be with the Guam Doom. Playing in that core position, Guam, not somebody I've seen play a lot of offlane, seen him play the feeding four, but that's about it. Having Turtle King to back him up there, it looks like Turtle King's going to be the support anyways. Could be either one still, but I assume Guam is going to be the core role here. That three role, that offlane. Going up against Martin and Nulligan. Nulligan is somebody I haven't seen play for a very long time. This guy is up to like 3 a.m. right now playing Dota. Very dedicated to play in. Yo, what's up? Okay. You didn't miss anything. We're good. All right, let's look at this draft. Oh, they picked this Razor hero. Okay, very cool. Venomancer in the game. Tiny longer clothes. All right. Um, cool. All right, you summed it up. None of the other lanes. Oh, who got banned? Did Drow get banned? Uh, no, I don't think so. Interesting. I I was kind of surprised that we didn't see a uh, Treant ban either, because I feel like that here was broken yeah, since the last well. change. But, yeah, anyways, I I think they just got dominated for the bounty runs, but Radiant's gonna get the second one top, so we'll be even. Martin might drop bottom though. I, no, they're gonna dive. They got it, especially with the Gale. Yep, Guam might feed, but that's fine. He can TP out of this. He's got a tango. Oh, there he goes. Very nice. What a player. Beautiful team play there. Dude, I haven't seen like any of these people play for such a long time. There's Nulligan in this game. There's Donger in this game. Nulligan. Face I haven't heard in a while. It's actually Donger is playing mid, which is like a long time since I've seen that. Back in the day, Donger and I used to do like the same MMR. Now he's like divine or something. Or immortal. I don't know. He's gotta be higher than that now. Anyways, they're actually going up bottom again. Nolgot tried to make a play with the disruption, but he's just getting completely turned on. And I think Guab's gonna die if Martin can get a couple more hits off with the dagger. Nope, not gonna commit for it. Turtle King's also dropping. Dude, this Shadow Demon hero is just questionable, though. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the pick. <laughs> Hasn't I, uh, really been changed that much. I played it, um, and it did pretty well on my team. However, I was playing Drow, and he just stacked camps for me. So, yeah. That's all I got. So you're saying pick Drow if you're picking uh, the Shadow yeah. Demon here. I mean, he could still stack pretty well with the PA. Obviously, PA has to go for a farming item if they really want to take advantage of it, but... Then they could potentially lose a lot of map control. Top, Slaughter is dead. Doggo went for the Tusk Shard block, but nothing going. Razor still benefits from stacks. The, the new ult is really good. Razor's like a farming hero now, which is really strange to think about. I, I still think you want to fight with the hero. Uh-oh, but uh -oh. Courier uh, His Courier's is very dead. Oh. Yep. And that's actually huge mid lane. He's without any GPM for a whole minute. It's, uh, is Just, uh, gold lost or 60 gold lost? Uh, is what is it? Lost? One GPM? I, I can't remember because it scales based on level and I don't know the equation. Either oh, way, no, no, it's, a, it's a lot of gold. By, by not having your courier for a minute, you lose 
use 100 passive gold. That's what I'm saying. All right. Nalagon oh, is it is exactly 100? Yeah, oh, yes. No, I'm just very good. It scales with your level, though, right? The passive gold? Yeah, I thought it did. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it only goes I think up. The, the death cost of courier does. I think that's something. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe that's what I ran into and I just read it completely wrong. I'm not sure. Either way, decent amount of gold. Obviously, this is really good for Donger now. It's just easy mistake to make this patch, I think. Nobody's used to, like, not having a flying courier by now. Yeah, I mean, that's also fair. But couriers are also just, like, way slower. And it's it's very interesting that they decided to buff Treant in a way that specifically allows him to snipe couriers. There's like three good courier sniping heroes now. Yeah. NP, Bounty Hunter, Potent- Well, Ricky's not as good anymore, but Ricky. Nolagon getting gone on again. This is be his third death, but they might just get the turn. On Guami disrupts oh. himself. Guam is healing. Couple more hits. Turtle King taking so much damage, but Guam gonna die first. Martin has to run away from this. Does he want to commit for the kill? On the Turtle King, one more oh. hit. No! Doesn't get a single miss. Actually, didn't level blur. He might have. He might have gotten two kills there had he leveled it once and not gone for the two levels in dagger. But I think that's actually the build, right? Or do you go one one one? I feel like one 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 is right. I think two one. Uh, either one's fine. It's like the same thing. Either way, this bot lane is a fucking disaster. This is uh, this is where I, as a carry, usually either go cry or go jungle, and uh, PA can't jungle, so I'm gonna cry this case. Yeah, but you're 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 a PA. You can't actually leave right now. You could potentially switch top, but uh, I don't think you want to do that this early no. on. This Naga is too strong right now. The guy's got like two wraith bands. And he's just gonna shred you. Mm -hmm. Especially when you don't have a level in blur. There's really nothing you can do about it. All right. So uh, PA is missing some crucial denies here. Needs to catch up. The Naga is just dominating top too. Soundproof doing a very good job CS wise. I think he been jungling that side camp just a bit. Minute five and oh, the Bounty Runes. Doggo is going to lose it. He got the shard block, but it wasn't quite enough. His dash stole it away from underneath. They got all four. Now it's all about the outpost though. The, the bounties aren't as big. I think Nolgon is just dead again, especially with the disruption gun. He's got three stacks on the Guam. But with Guam tanking tower hits, I don't think he wants to do this right now. The buyback from the Shadow Demon, I don't think he needed to. I, I think the three was enough. The buyback wasn't necessary, but maybe they can get the kill onto Turtle King. He doesn't have disruption for another two seconds. Do they really want to keep chasing this? This is a very big commit. Oh, especially rotation down from Doggo. <laughs> Shards are gonna hit, but the three man slow and honestly, space created is, is the name of the game, I guess, if you're uh Turtle King. I mean I guess, I don't know. When you're that far ahead as like an offlane combo, you give up so much XP though. True. Like, this, this PA is level five now. Holy shit, this PA is level five. Level Dude, five compared level... to four on Guam. That's that's actually crazy. Like Gold, Oops. gold in the early game doesn't matter too much. In the ocean. Miss that kill. Oh, Quave just like ran down the tiny mid. That's how slow that hero moves, though. That's what you do, man. Oh, this guy's got a wind lace. Holy shit! I love that item. You gotta buy it on every single hero. Move speed oh, is the most speed. important stat in the game. Mm -hmm. I agree. But very much so. Like I don't know. I I really think that in the early game, like. You, you can have like 2.5k net worth of 10 minutes as a carry this patch and you'll be fine as long as you have enough XP. That's just kind of how the laning phase is right now. Yeah, especially you just got to be somewhat close because you just want to be able to fight around yeah. the 10 minute mark, I think. Although Dash is just diving a little bit too far, going to die top as Nolagon died bottom, going for the TP out is soundproof, not going to spot him. Yeah, but it's all the, I, I feel like it's just all about the 10 minute mark now and if you can get outposts early on you can just snowball from then even with the changes yeah. the the amount of vision outposts give you is kind of insane i think that's something else people oh like yeah uh, how far down into the forest it goes yeah no it's it's actually crazy like if you have certain ranged heroes like oh shit. oh, oh. 
I think Guam's actually just running down Martin Bottom, too. I don't know if he actually wants to die for Whoa. it. He uses the Doom. He might just um, fall, though. He can't keep taking tower hits. He's caught by these creeps. He pops the salve. He lives. God gamer. What a player. Guam is making the plays this game. Very uncharacteristic for him. This is his first season back after uh, I, it was either a one or a two season ban from captaining. So maybe he's got vengeance in his heart. But I, I think Dash is just dead. R.I.P. Yo, Tiny's got the broom handle. <laughs> That's cool. Wait, does that actually work on him? I also I, I Iron Talon on the Naga should help quite a bit. Oh shit! Really? This guy got a Talon? Holy shit! Yeah, that's really Stardar nice. going top on Inalaga, but there's so much armor on this hero. Holy crap. Yeah, he's fine. Like, Slardar ult almost does nothing. Like, barely gets rid of the added armor. Wait, Especially underneath the tower. Martin getting gone on once again. They don't even need the Doom for this one. Oh my god. Alright, I mean, I was saying, like, as long as you get XP, you're fine, but, like... Your offlaner is seven and one. That's that's a special circumstance. Yeah. Soundproof lost the courier though, so this is a courierless naga now. The next minute this, thirty. This this doom has phase plus drums at minute nine. That's that's bad. That is. Bad. Yeah. They, they can't <laughs> contest. They can't contest bottom like at all no. anymore. Like as yeah. soon as this tower falls, it's bad news. Also, like the pickup of the frost attack helps them get that. Helps them Wait, get that, that slow under the PA. Yeah. It's such a spell. Like it's super undervalued. So we're on towers. No. That would be legit. Uh, top, they're trying to go onto the Naga. There's three heroes here, but he's just turning it. I don't think they can actually get this kill. The Naga's too tanky. He doesn't even have the ult, but he doesn't need it. They don't have any damage for this. The king has to be a bit careful. They're going for the steal onto the outpost. Can they stop it? He's going to get the channel off. He, they get the XP. They haven't gotten bottom yet either. So that is a nice steal. But they're not chasing off the Slardar. We'll get the kill with the Veno. And bottom Guam just running out of Tusk. Hold on. Hold on. This bottom push wasn't taken. No, it wasn't. It just popped. That's so... St oh, wait, wait. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Not yeah, five minutes, not five minutes, it was ten. Yeah. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, the Tusk died bottom. They, I mean, very nice play by the Slaughter. You do sacrifice your life, but it's 125 XP. It's legit. I mean, I guess. I don't know if it's that much. Uh, it, it, it's like a seventh of a level. Alright, meanwhile, bottom, this Doom is a thousand. Oh, shit. Uh, he might die. He's really quick. He's gonna get the turn with the Doom, but the rotation down from two separate heroes. The Tusk needs to get here for the save with the Bash. I think they can get the deny. No. Oh the God. trade. It's Dude. the Slardar for the Guam. Dude, Green Knight 100% should have kept clicking. Like, he was fine there if he just kept hitting the Doom. Yeah, I think so. He just started running for some reason, though. I mean, you'll still take a kill onto a pretty fed Doom, though. It's going to your support, yeah. unfortunately. You probably want one of your cores down there. Yeah, he didn't get the XP for the kill either. God, this Doom is level 10. Holy shit. Let's see. It's, it's Donger building. Does he have Racers? massive manliness yet? No. Is that what you build on this tiny hero now? I, I hear that's what you do. Uh, seriously? Uh, With all the low cooldown spells uh, he's got, oh, his courier is dead on the Naga once again. That's the second time the snowball coming out. There's no shards. I, I don't think they can actually get this one, especially with the swap, they get a kill onto the Razor. They've gone too far. He just baited himself. The dodge almost from Soundproof. It's not going to matter. Again, this Naga is just so tanky. Pops the song. Able to get the stun off too. Guam has rotated over, and this is looking like a pretty dead Slardar, but he caught him in the river. No He's very quick, quick fish, but not able to run away. I also killed the Shadow Demon too. This kind of looks like a stomp now. It was close for a little bit, but they... I don't know if it's really a throw, but... 
Them chasing high ground there, definitely a mistake. Yeah, I don't know. Big question, So, 8k at 12 minutes. Um, this is definitely where I start to cry as a carry. Yep. Um, yep. I mean... I don't know what you do as a PA. I don't play this hero, so I don't really understand. Ideally, you don't get this bad of a start, but... I mean, yeah, but like, what are you gonna do now, right? Like, how does, how does this team do anything? Can they split push? Yeah, I mean, it's really about how you fight around your Razor. You've lost both outposts. Yeah. I like them going for a smoke, but I think it needs to be closer to the 15 minute mark so you can yeah. just take an outpost right after. I think that... They're trying to find Turtle yeah. King. He's placed a couple wards. He's gonna pop the ult too, so they need to be careful, but none of the rest of the team is yeah. over here. It's not bad. You... I don't know, it's just a free kill. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, they also get the ward too. I think it's well. Actually, no, that wasn't even an ob's ward. This doom is actually killable with this Tuscan slaughter. Not when they're half health. Like Definitely, that. if they keep looking, they didn't really use yeah. anything big. Or I guess they they used the shadow demon alt, but they could keep going up to 14 minutes. So we're looking at that clock, looking at those outposts. And obviously this patch, it's not great. You've lost all your tier one towers and only taken one. I think oh, they're, they're leaving. They really don't want to fuck with this. Yeah, they definitely can't fight into the Doom plus. Oh, uh, Venal ult is down, so a lot of their damage is gone, especially with the Gale missing completely. The Dooms dove a little bit too far. Nolgon pops the ult on him, so he's going to be slow. Donger only going to be able to get the kill onto the Shadow Demon. Can they keep chasing oh, the Toss no. off to the Tusk? Oh, They're going to get two. But uh, they still getting out. The rest of the team is farming. He's still farming, I guess. He's going Battle Fury. Oh, I don't like this. Not one bit. It's gonna be very late. Yeah, he's not even going for the bounty. It's about to spawn. I don't know what he's doing. I guess Razor's like, I'll get it. But... I think they, they just lost both outposts too. And his Martin didn't want to fight for top. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Ooh, Van Brace. Ooh, what a good pickup. What a lucky pickup. Oh, Martin will feel pretty good. Wait, that's the one that gives you... It's a... Wait, oh god, you can't even like see it when it's just the recipe. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, tell you. Yeah, you just get to put together two like Wraith Bands and shit together. So it just... Provides based on the Vampire's main attribute. Okay. donger has got some nice items you... here. Especially Broom Handle. Oh yeah, it's actually very good. Holy crap. Look at this boy's attack range. God damn. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it really doesn't feel like they can do much. I honestly think Dyer can potentially fight top. Oh. Well, I'm found an Aquila. Game's over. Dyer won. Game over. If, wait. Here, Naga and GG. Dragons and Dyer two. actually finds a good one, too. I, honestly, you could give that to Naga and pretty much unkillable for the next 10 minutes. I, don't, I honestly think they're... I don't think it's worth it. Like, I don't really know what it'll do for you. I think you could put it on like a support and make a support tank here. Or you put it on your Doom. Because Doom could use more armor. Yeah, and then you just <laughs> just run in with Doom, not being afraid of anything. It would be pretty fun. Like, it's fine on Donger. He already has a lot of armor, though, honestly. Yeah, but they're definitely really constricted right now. They have zero map control yep. for the most part. They have their triangle, I guess. That's something. Oh, they smoked up. All right, this is... They're going to run into this doom. Yeah, they oh, definitely need to find a kill no, right now. That's... Quiva didn't pop the Q. They don't even have vision. He gets the stun. He's going to pop the doom, too. So Might be a little bit too much. The toss on oh. with the Venge. Dash going in. The Razor is going to fall immediately, and the rest of their damage is pretty much yeah. gone. He needs to buy back. Nolgon trying to run away from this one. Here in comes the damage from the Razor, but he got caught by the Veno ult. I think he's just going to fall once again. But Martin rotating over gets the kill onto the Veno. They're actually turning this. The double buyback working out. They've gotten three kills, and this is definitely the fight that they needed. 
Smart buyback from Cueva might have just saved the game. Oh, that was so sick. That was so sick. Your PA actually has XP now. Yeah, and he doesn't get hit by anything. He basically goes and touched that entire fight. Now let's look at this. Uh, fight recap. Yeah, 5k XP for Radiant. That's huge. Gold change, you get a little bit for Radiant, which is good. Um, but goddamn, that's, that's so good. I honestly didn't see that broom handle got yeah. dropped for PA too, which seems really good. I mean, at this point, you take whatever you can get on the PA. People's oh god, increases both non-primary attributes. I feel like that's not great on PA. You probably give that to the um, Shadow Demon. No, he, you you benefit from the HP. Uh, I guess. Wait, HP and ints. You don't really need the mana. You don't need the mana. But, but the, yeah, the HP is. PA is just so squishy. You can. You really just need to take whatever you can. Um, Tiny is... Or, oh, really Doggo has gone a bit too far. Can't even hit the shards, and there's no team help here. In fact, I don't think they want to be here. No. Nice shards block. I'm not even sure how he pulled that one off, because he threw it the other way. <sighs> Alright, meanwhile, <laughs> this Naga has 230 CS. Hasn't... Didn't even show up to that last fight, right? Like, I don't think he did. Yeah, no, this Naga's just showing. I think that unless this PA somehow gets like two items really quickly, this Naga is going to have a free game. Even regardless of how well the rest of the team is doing. Like, if all of Dire feeds like a bunch, this Naga is still going to carry the game. Like, yeah, I mean, what are you buying a Naga to just end the game? Like, within. You buy hard next. You just Pretty much goal. unkillable. You won't have enough damage. He has Manta Defusal, he just, he does so much damage with this build. Yeah, well it is getting to the point where I think if you, if you're able to get Slardal off on an Naga, and Naga has somehow already used Manta as well as the Q, <laughs> you could potentially kill her. But yeah, but not really feasible. It's a very specific set of instructions. Yeah, Doggo's just dead. Oh, yeah. He, actually, they don't even need to use the Blink to initiate this. The ult has to get popped on the Guami gets the swap too. Wait, Dash is going for the the, the swap and the swap. The play. swap stun. <laughs> oh, the so double he, swap. Yes. He was gonna swap with Doom, then swap with Shadow Demon. Genius. Counterplay bottom though. I, I don't think they can actually take the tower, but it it's something. You've at least tried. They got the outpost too, so they are splitting XP for now. They've gotten tier ones at the very least. Like, if it's 20 minutes into the game, and like the enemy mid tower is still alive and yours is down. That's that's a, that's a terrible sign. There's a there's like a statistic that like well it's more of like an anecdote, but like if your mid tower dies first, then you're more likely to lose the game. That's just like mid T one. You know, yeah. Huh. I mean, is that just for this patch or is that in, in gen general? It's just been like a historical thing. Like it's always kind of been like that. I could see that being true. I mean, I I guess uh, you could probably expand that to whoever takes the first tier one. I um, think probably the offlane tier one is a bit bigger. But I don't know. Tier one, I I think safe lane or safe lane tier one is the easiest tower to get in the game. I think. Yeah. Um, it opens oh, yeah. up two camps for you. Um, and sort of just shifts where you farm, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. The tier 2 is down mid. I, They're gonna try to fight this once again, but... Nullgon has to find a catch that I don't think they have. Turtle King might be the target, but they're not fast enough. Oh, but they catch Dash. Nice. In the river. It's not bad. Um, I think if they, if they make a smoke play right now... Uh, they can probably make something out of it. I mean, they gotta make a smoke play and find the Naga. I, I feel like, actually going for, instead of the heart, going for the butterfly, it looks like. Actually, almost has it, too. They only have physical damage on Radiant. Mm-hmm. So, it makes sense. Well, other than the Razor, of course, but... Uh, yeah. I do think that... But Razor's uh, just dead right now. 
I, I don't think he's able to run away from this one. He is just going to tick down. Oh, the save for now? It's not actually going to save. He's just going to die as soon as he gets out of this. The deny? Nope. Got it a little bit too far away, especially with that toss, but that's onto an illusion. I mean, I guess he'll take the Naga illusions. Really have soundproof wants to keep diving. They really want this kill. He popped the ult onto an illusion. Once again, he thought the toss was real, but it was not. It was only a bait. They're going further. They've popped the dupe on the slardar, and this really feels like the game ending play. Yep. The slardar dead, but Guam has gone too far. The buyback from the slardar, it's 2v4. Oh, PA really went the lifesteal talent. That's questionable. I don't like uh... that. Uh. Yeah, especially when you're this far behind and you really need to be farming. Trying to go onto a Naga illusion, but again, they can't find the real one. The PA is just dead. Martin has to buy back, and TP is straight into this one. Doggo is going to be there with the snowball. They might get the kill on Dash. They do. The song popped. Where's the TP? Instantly out. Beautifully played. They don't get the racks, but I mean, you'll take the tier 3 tower plus the two buybacks. Yeah, and that 18k is only getting bigger and bigger. It, I feel like we shouldn't have had this big of a, a stomp, though. It, it didn't feel like it was there was ever really a point that the game was over. It's just slowly built. Yeah. It, well, not slowly, moderately built. I think it's probably a better way of saying it. Like, they were they were down quite a significant amount of 10 minutes. Oh, they're gonna sneak Roach. I, I guess because they lost bottom lane top lane was not a disaster But they didn't really accomplish anything and mid lane was probably a draw other than the courier death from the razor He did kill the tiny once or twice They don't have the song to contest this roach though and it's just dead soundproof doesn't even know about it They could actually go on to soundproof the snowball is on to the right hero, but he doesn't know it Doggo doesn't even know what he's hitting soundproof doesn't have the song to counter this He's just gonna fall He's hurting though, there's so much damage coming out of a Naga. Where was the Razor that whole time? Two heroes die, and the Razor just has to walk up and get the kill. Yeah. Let's see if I pick up. Um, it's all a bit of XP. 3,000, almost 3,500 damage from the Naga in that fight. Lasted maybe 10 35. seconds. Wait, did I say 35,000 or 3,500? I might have still had the other fight registered or something. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever. Naga's still crazy ahead. I mean, Naga's a pretty good hero. Yeah. All this Metamancer's taking a shrine. Right? I was wondering if they're gonna go for it, because obviously the, the Venge swap now works on sleeping units. Oh yeah, that's true actually. It's so weird. I haven't seen the the Dark Seer Naga combo yet though. Like not even once. Like where is it at? Why is nobody doing this? Especially Dark Seer Naga ET. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Such an easy setup. Then you have a Dark Seer ET in the offlane. That is broken. Oh, that's pretty good. Donger actually finds an even better item though, I think. Especially, I mean, who do you put that on even? Probably a Doom, and you can get like eggs on Doom, and it's really good. They're gonna give it to Turtle King for now. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think some sometimes you go for like the, the kill on the Venomancer, so he can't doesn't get his ult off. This just sort of ensures he does. Yeah, I mean, you are, you're invulnerable during the, uh, the death phase, right? I guess is what you'd call yeah, it. The yeah. ghost phase. It's like it's like raking eggs. Oh. Well, Nolagon using the alt, but it was kind of in vain. They're actually gonna get caught out. They're just walking at each other to start these fights. And Doggo is definitely the sacrifice here, but they won't get any other kills. They don't have buybacks, so they really need to get out of this one. Does Soundproof want to use the song? It's only going to catch Nolagon if they go for it. Oh, we got the Especially, oh, yeah, with the Gale, there's no way Nolagon uh, is getting away from this one. Could delay it, but doesn't even get the disruption off. 
40 seconds. I think they're they're fine. All right, this is, this is the be there point. Point. If you hold here, the PA actually has a chance. Because right now the PA has battle through. Uh -huh. Guam initiating, going for the stun, but he didn't pop the doom. It gets the slow. I think PA just needs a BKB and he can't live. There goes the Aegis, but the Doom is still up. There's no way to get out of this one. Out comes oh, the BKB, and it's a bit too early. He can't get the swap off. There's no save. Guam or Nolagon wasn't able to get off the disruption on back on the front side. It looks like Shrek tried to go on to Donger, but nothing happening. There's just not enough damage, especially with the PA down. There's no buyback. Where's the Razor? He pops the BKB. He wants to start dealing some damage onto the back lines. Turtle King pops the elf, but it's only on the one. That's a buyback on Doggo. That's going to be gone. The kill off dash away on the front side. He's killing off Turtle King too. Dead, but there's so much damage from the Naga. Well, a double kill for the Razor, but again, there's no buyback down for 60 seconds. The Naga is just ridiculous. Yeah, and I think you just have to call it GG. Especially with Heart picked up. They're getting kills still, though. They might kill off Donger. Nope. Not even close. <laughs> when was the Naga picked in draft? Uh, I think it was the last pick. Yeah. It was either 4th or 5th. It's a, it's a good last pick. Very cheesy. It's good. I don't think it's... It's a really strong pick right now, and it's they didn't ha really have a draft to counter it. I guess they could have gone for the disruptor was banned out, so most of the. All right, we'll see if Guam starts lobby two. But yeah, it it feels like the game shouldn't have been that big of a stomp. But I mean, you leave a you leave a Naga untouched for twenty five minutes or so. That's gotta be a great Nog game, though. You gotta feel good oh, as a carry. He's having the time of his life. Your, <laughs> Your team's... team's running around making space for you. You just get to click creeps all day. You show up for like two fights at the end of the game and you win. That's the dream. There we go. Oh shit, are you in the lobby? Oh, yeah, you are. Good. I didn't see it. it was okay. But I I don't know I I don't know if you ban the Naga cuz I feel like you can counter it if you oh, if you you're can. prepared for it. Almost 60 armor on tiny. What? That's balanced, dude. Oh, he had the Titan Sliver too. That's actually crazy. He is so tanky. The Sunderall barely felt like it did anything. It, uh -huh. uh, it's insane how quick Razor melted too. Even with the BKB, the Naga just turns like three illusions onto him and it's just oh, gone. Yeah. Razor as a hero does not have that much agi gain. So his armor isn't that huge, um, which is why the Nago is sort of able to melt him there. He's an Agi hero with higher strength gain than Agi, actually. Oh, I wonder if I copy pasted it last. There we go. But what a patch, though. Honestly, I don't. I, I'm still torn on whether or not I like the patch because I I feel like we're not seeing comebacks as often. Like it's pretty much impossible. Um, I think comebacks are still doable. Um, it, it, comebacks usually happen as a result of the carry, like getting farm on like the losing side. I think that's sort of how I'm seeing it because late game is quite strong. Um, getting all your talents, the extra five levels of of stats. Um, the new late game items, another backpack slot. There's a lot. There's a lot of late game stuff you can do. Yeah, but it, it feels like if you lose the game early on and you start losing map control early on, it's so much harder to get back into it. 
you Especially if you're them. the carry on the losing side. There's an extra TP spot in the middle of the map now, so you can't like... Oh, yeah. Everywhere farming is just dangerous if you've yeah, lost your towers. The the new shrine locations are... Um, well, they're, they're like roughly the same place. The, it's really just like the jungle, um, the new jungle layout. It's very interesting. You have like the, the more low ground camps. Um, and like the, the two mid camps, which are like, there's, there's, there's no doubt about it. They're, they're mid camps. Like mm -hmm. they're there. So the mid laner can go and farm. Those are also quite huge. If you have a hero that can utilize those, it's really good. It's like the the two medium camps. They're both like to the right of the lane. Yep. Well. Yeah, if yeah you, to the left if, and the right. Yeah. Yeah. If if you're confident enough in your your play, what you can do sometimes, like especially if you're owning the lane, you can push the lane, force the other guy under tower, and then go take his camp. It's uh. Oh, that's interesting. Well, you gotta have a hero that's able to do that. Razor is definitely a hero that can accomplish there, that. Um, Void Spirit. Well, I guess Tiny could do it too. If you're playing Tiny Storm, does. yeah. Yeah, Storm's good. Especially, I think... Um, our runes feel closer. I'm not sure. Yeah, they are. They totally are. It's more designed so that if you're going to get a rune, it's not as big of a commitment anymore. Yeah. Which is nice. The warding is so much easier. Yep. <clears throat> All right, what's your what's your top support this patch? I mean, it's always Shakira, dude. Oh, it's okay. always Shakira. It's actually Clockwork at every single position because I don't think I've lost a game with Clockwork. Wait, no, I have. I've lost one. Oh, there's my favorite, the Venge. But yeah, it's Shakira every patch, and that hero doesn't get touched like at all. I don't, I don't think it got touched last patch anyway. Like any of these, but. I think people go back to Jakiro when they realize all the other supports are dog shit, which happens quite often. Um, he is quite reliable. Nice. The strength gain got increased on Jakiro. Oh really? So, yes. Oh, that actually got buffed. That's one of the. That's a good reason to pick Jakiro. He's like he's like an ogre kind of hero. Cup, the strength. stun is still so good now that's too. Great. The duration is just crazy if you max it out first. Max Ice Path, ooh, controversial. Are you oh. kidding me? That's like the build. There's no you other correct way to build that hero. What? Why would you not max dual breath? Because it's like. trash, dude. You, okay, Ice Path is like a 2.75 second stun, essentially what? three what? seconds. I missed that, hold on. Oh, 2.5. Oh, is it 2.5? Yeah. Right, That's I'm long. point. Yeah, that's a ridiculous for an AoE stun. Plus, I I think the the build is like at level four you go one two one. Or or level five I think you go no it's two one one and then you max out ice path from then on because the second level in dual good. breath doubles the damage. Yeah, that's that's that sounds good. But yeah, you leave two points in dual breath and then max ice path. Mm -hmm. And then the Q or the uh, liquid fire is just man. I used to go like. I wanted to try to max liquid fire, but the damage scaling is just so terrible. <laughs> no, it's 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 so bad. The only I guess the cooldown. Yeah. But even that's bad. Because you're in lane as a Jakiro, and all you can do is just liquid fire people. And it doesn't even last long, it doesn't do that much damage, it's an okay attack. Yeah. That's why I, I think you put one level into it at like level three and then you're able to trade because you put it on him yeah, It only lasts like five seconds. You can trade with him for those five seconds yeah. and then you kind of have to walk away, but You're basically guaranteeing that you can get a dual birth uh, skill off and then you're slowing them even more mm -hmm. It also slows attack speed of towers, which is okay Yeah, if you want to take the the tower early on But uh, usually your other heroes can accomplish that a bit better. But anyways, I think we're getting the same bans. Obviously, the Venge got banned out, but uh, Doggo is banning out the same heroes as last game. I like Wyvern. The Wyvern buff's really good. Oh, yes. 
you don't have to like time your uh yeah, like, ice blast like, anymore like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever <laughs> dude that was so annoying it really was as a wyvern player you like you can't fuck up now pretty much you used to be able to fuck everything up by saving heroes with your alt but now it's just like nope even if they're low i can still kill them so good Oh boy, when that hero first came out though. Oh my god. And everybody could damage. No, I think was it TI five or was it TI six? TI five, Darkseer Wyvern, first phase. Every oh game. yeah. And if you didn't get that, you have a less wreck. What a time when what neutral time. creatures didn't have magic resistance. Oh, you could just stack. No, the, really oh god, the golem game. still had magic res, right? Yeah, what? but like this. Oh, you're talking like the the Chen. Uh... No, no, no. Like, you you pick like a Shadow Fiend or a Lina or a Leshrac or a Storm, and your support just stacks. Oh, speaking of the Leshrac. Hello. Oh, you're saying the neutral creeps didn't have the magic res aura, and yeah. you could farm a lot faster. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What the? F All right, I don't like this. This is so. What? Nice so fucker's scum. broken as fuck, dude. This is so. You don't pick Cuddle with Night Stalker. What are you doing? <laughs> Okay, yes, that is, that is that is pretty weird. I think it's very But it weird. throws them off. It throws them off. They've been enemies their entire... I've seen this movie before, right? They're enemies the entire movie, and then they're like, at the ending battle, they come together and they gotta, like, fight. Haven't you seen, like, Guardians of the Galaxy when Nebula joins them? Yeah. It's like that. Dude, this is... This is like the kind of draft I would like theory craft when I'm like super baked one day. I'm like, Dude, <laughs> yeah. I just if you pick Coddle and Night Stalker, they won't be able to fight you in the night or the day. Whoa. Dude, that's genius. What are you talking about? Genius. 200 IQ plays. They can't fight you on any single time of the day. Maybe in the dawn or like the, the dusk, but that's it. <laughs> dawn or dusk. Oh my god. Earth's that's the band, only though. time. Because then it changes in the middle of the fight, and they don't realize, so they don't take advantage of it. Spooked. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but yes, yeah, so one hero does defeat the purpose. It's going to be night, like, 99% of the time, this oh, game. Really and then <laughs> Coddle's just going to feel so bad. I think... I mean, you can just play Coddle like a mana battery, kind of. Yeah, also, like, it's still pretty good, I, but... Eh. Are you going to lane them together? I think you will. Dude, that, that's like what we did. We what we do, like Coddle Bristle or something? Coddle Beastmaster? Um, Coddle Beastmaster. Coddle Beastmaster was sick. You keep just throwing out uh Night Stalker cues over and over again. But like what does the Night Stalker Q do for you? It's damage, dude. I'm like, okay. I feel I've never seen anybody pick Coddle Beastmaster to lane together, and that's broken. It's quite good. Undervalued. Although the damage it doesn't stack or the damage uh buff or whatever it is i don't think it stacks anyways it just adds to the timer i would guess with beastmaster yeah no you you get increased uh damage and yeah i know but if you hit somebody with it twice is what i'm saying i think it just so adds to the time what there's a little there's a little indicator on the axe this is something that like never gets brought up because like Usually nobody pick picks the spell. hero. Yeah, nobody picks Beastmaster, and nobody, like, no, nobody thinks of the the Q as a damage amp because it has a eight second duration, or like, no, ten second duration, and the cooldown is eight seconds. So you have a two second window normally on Beastmaster to get additional axe stacks, which never happens. But it's too weird no, of a timing to get. Yeah. Yeah, it is a very weird timing, but um. Let me, I'm going to look this up, actually. I'm curious. Also, yeah, you just don't have the mana, because you probably don't want to spam it like that either on yeah, no, cooldown. But damage amp per stack on Wild Axes is at max 12%. So normally you'd only see a 12, a 24% damage amp, but you can stack this up. You can get to, like, 48, and then, like... Wait, is that percentage? Yeah. The fuck? Yeah, it's crazy. All right, anyways... Uh, a Bloodseeker pick is kind of strange. I don't think so. This hero is laning focused, and I think if you're able to kind of starve the offlaner of XP, you do quite well. So that's sort of what they're thinking. Yeah, and 
it's not really a kill lane, but they have a lot of healing. Like, hard to kill heroes. Wyvern can turn pretty well. You can also lane it mid. Um, I don't favor it too much. Oh god, this hero again. I thought this hero died like two patches ago. Yeah, everybody thinks Ogre dies, and then Ogre just like comes back in some new Frankenstein way. Too easy. Way. Like, you remember back He's in the day when people like down. used to actually max ignite? Yes. And they were like, ignite sucks. Let's max the other spells. And they were like, oh, let's just max bloodlust and bloodlust might carry. And then people figured out. You let's just max bloodlust and play off lane with max bloodlust. <laughs> Dude, if they try lane right now, oh my gosh, let's go. Try lane on who? You try lane Coddle, Night Stalker, Ogre. That sounds like a waste of try lane. You gotta keep this Bloodseeker out of the game, alright? Although, your Axe, this could work, this could work. Axe is just gonna go creep cut, just pick a core that can survive getting hit by creeps. So you go with like Life Stealer. This could I mean, definitely could. work. I think, well, Life Stealer's kind of fallen out of favor. Yeah, but look at it, Life Stealer this game, though. Yeah, you counter the Lesh, you counter the Wyvern, because you don't hit too fast anyway, so you don't really have to worry about hitting your teammates, plus you have the magic immunity. Wait, you know what you pick? Bloodseeker strength, axe strength. This is this is where you pick Weaver and you build first item blade mill. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop, dude. Uh, you just get ruptured and you blade mill and you time lapse it and you kill the Bloodseeker. Wow, what what a play. I'm sure the Bloodseeker won't just, you know, rupture you once and then decide never to do that again. Yeah, but then you just, like, run up to the Lesh Rack with your Blade Mill. Easy. And then he won't... Yeah, I, I mean, I guess... Oh, that you could pick Ricky here, too, and do the same thing, though. Oh, my God. Pick Ricky, get six, buy Blade Mill, and then go stand next to Lesh Rack when they're trying to push. Better yet... You uh you pick Ricky and you buy a Radiance. Or wait, no 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 no. This is this is this is where you pull out the special. <laughs> the Radiance Ghost Walk Invoker. Oh God. Didn't Topson do that or something? <laughs> what? I hope so. It's probably in a pub. I am guaranteeing you they they're using a lot of reserve time on these picks though. This is only wow. Scrim Reek, by the way. Oh really? Yeah, this is the week zero. Because, uh, oh god, who won it last year? Oh yeah, Doggo's team won it last year. Because oh. Snow's team has finished twice two seasons in a row. <laughs> or finished second. Monkey? Oh, I don't like this. Uh, monkey. yeah, it's pretty bad into the Bloodseeker. Uh, and they have counters for it, too. I don't believe in Monkey King safe lane. Like, you, you, you pick it against Axe and you're like, oh, dude, I'm gonna, like, click this axe a bunch and then get my health back and he can't man fight me the axe can man fight you the oh yeah you. especially when he can just walk away from you after he throws battle hunger on you yeah also like there's a lesh rack he's just gonna stun you <laughs> yeah and maybe they can't try lane anymore but my plan is gone i'm not a captain though so <sighs> that's what i would have done <laughs> I don't think they're going to do it. But, I mean, Monkey King Ogre isn't too bad. Potentially, the axe doesn't just walk away from you. Again, into the left rack, it's tough. But, uh... None of their lanes are looking like kill lanes at all. I think the, um... The old, the old Team Toads. Long live the Toads here. I'm really liking their laning setup. They can do it a couple ways, which is really good. They can lane the Blood or the Lesh mid, but... They're most likely going to run Wyvern Blood and then Lesh Axe. Okay. I think you do Wyvern Blood. There's just so much healing in that lane. You don't have to worry about yeah. the constant spam of Coddle or Night Stalker. And it's not like a direct kill lane, but like you can threaten heroes quite hard. Uh, I kind of like the Kunkka pick to lock down a Bloodseeker if he starts moving really fast. But again, it's, I think it's, good. it's, not, it, it's okay. It's not great. It's hard to pull off. They need a... Oh shit, I'm tired. Hmm. They need the catch from the Kunkka. Oh yeah. So, Especially, they should have a Vision advantage this game. Although you don't get Flying Vision. Wait, do you? You get Flying Vision from Night Stalker. I'm thinking of Bat, uh, bat Rider. Yeah. Speaking of Bat Rider, where the hell is he? Nobody's picked that hero either. They could pick Bat Rider right now. 
Where? Why are they not picking Bat Rider right now? What? Um, why would you not pick Bat Rider right now? I don't like Slark here. Dude, with the Bloodseeker? Yeah, it's it's. I eh. think Slark is kind of shit. Is this or mid Slark, Slark too? Because Cueva is playing it. Oh, it's mid. Oh, dude, Donger's gonna own this guy. Oh, Donger's a pretty legendary Kunkka player, if I remember correctly. So. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong for this, this Slark. Like, what's what's stopping this Night Stalker from just flying at you with his silence on? I don't get it. Yeah, the, and dude, they actually don't have any catch for Night Stalker doing that. You have a stun from Leshrac, which is going to happen. You have to rupture the Night Stalker pretty much or get the uh, Wyvern ult off on him. And you probably don't want to do that either. Yeah. Oh, we lost Doggo. Oh, that's rough. I mean... <sighs> I'm torn. I don't like the Slark pick. I like the rest of their heroes. I think they they, they have some salt. Oh my god, he has the axe. Oh, he has the axe boxing on. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is that part of the Arcana or? No, he. That's like part of his default model. What? I thought that was the Arcana, right? With the the axeless well, axe. If you, if you put the Arcana on and you don't have like something else equipped, that's just like the default thing. Wait, is that the is that an Immortal or is it an Arcana? I can't remember. I don't think it's an Arcana. Yeah, no, it's an Immortal, because I never got it. Damn it. Dude, rip. This is a level 25 axe, though. Holy crap. Big man. Wait, no, level 14, but he just has every single challenge unlocked. Okay. Alright. I kind of don't like this axe build. He has nine tangos. Like maybe he's gonna be cutting, so I can see a use there. But I mean, you probably instead of going the tangos, you want to buy mangoes, right? Just a better version. Mangoes are also good. Um, if you want to be able to spam your Q, especially into Monkey King. Yeah. I I just think that with having your own courier the laning meta is a, quite a bit different you can sort of just carry out more regen pretty easily yeah but uh, if he's cutting his courier has yeah. to take this super dangerous path yeah so that's so. that's a reason for that so i guess he thinks he's gonna cut i don't think he actually cutting in early levels is beneficial here what, into the Monkey King Ogre? Ogre is yeah. not a great hero at stopping it, so. Yeah, and Monkey King can come, but he's kind of low armor early, so he's kind of susceptible to, to that. Mm. So I think, I think what's going to happen is this axe is going to creep cut until he's like level 3, and then he's going to go to lane, and he's going to like just dominate the monkey. Because even if Monkey King gets like all his CS, the axe is just gonna be too huge for him to deal with. Yeah. Level two spin, maybe like a battle hunger or a Q, one of those two. And especially it oh god, when does the first tier start again? Is it ten minutes or is it five? The what? When is the first tier again? Tier? Yeah. Oh, it's seven minutes. Seven minutes, what? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then if you get three items per tier, right? Yes, so kind of. So, I mean, eh, he's probably not going to cut that long, though. I was saying if he if he can farm this jungle pretty safely, too. Yeah, he has a lot of options in this game. And the supports are not really able to deal with attacks. I think like Dyer's mid camp is a bit better. Now I'm looking at it. We were yeah. talking about it a little bit, but there's trees around yeah. the Radiant one. Dyer's, it's like you just walk straight over to it. Yeah. It's a path through the trees. Mm -hmm. I think if you're playing like 
like a drow, you're okay. You just multi shot. Well, I mean, and radiant has. I think this one's a bit closer on the top side. Because you have to. Oh, I guess uphill is a bit safer farming, though. Yeah. <laughs> you do have quite a bit of vision of the radiant camp, though. You have, like, a pretty big sight line here. I don't know if you can see what I'm drawing. Yes, I can. Yeah. 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 But meanwhile, here, you can kind of get snuck up on like this. Yeah, uh, potentially. I, I feel like you'd still see them a bit better. But uh, is this Monkey King mid, actually? Are they switching no. it up? That could be good. Um, and Donger, it looks like Donger is going top. They think Kunga is kind of weird. I think putting the Monkey mid is okay. I think you give the Slark an easier time. But I don't know if that's worth it. Yeah, so and I it feels like... Yeah, oh, go ahead. Um, Kunga is just such like an XP reliant hero, hmm. and I don't know. You can just really dominate the, the mid area. I mean, I was just gonna say you probably want to pair the Monkey King with the Ogre Bloodlust too. Some He's gonna lose that advantage. Walk. Turtle King is getting pretty low, but is able to get the pushback now. Nolikon is just gonna Nolikon get turned on. He stayed a bit too long. I'll stick is four. Yeah, he actually can't do this. Nolgon could honestly just turn on him and bait him, but. Oh, you. There you go. Turtle King, he has so much more regen. How does Turtle King have zero regen already? He went for Buckler first. I think you can do that in the offlane. I mean, I guess if it allows them to play super aggro, it also doesn't apply to your creeps. I thought it did. That's the active. That's it. The axe is already creep cutting. Oh wait, no, it's a passive now. Oh god. Yep, and and this is what we expected, right? They they have no way to deal with this. Doggo is gonna feel bad because like, what does a Leshrac do now? And just, I guess just go bottom. Um, he can kind of stick around here actually, and just like fuck with people. Uh. Nah, he really can't fight this ogre though. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're Doggo, you're like, well, this Ogre really isn't doing anything either. If I can keep Ogre in the lane, they're splitting XP, whereas my Axe is getting solo XP. Yeah. Oh, you just not noticed that. Because <laughs> you didn't level anything before this. It's Monkey King. MK is a passive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nolagon instantly flaming. Bruh. He must play on legacy keys. I don't know how people have issues with their hotkeys oh, constantly. Jump. Oh, Ooh, just missed it. Oh, he wanted the courier. <laughs> I he could have made the play. That's kind of dangerous, though, into a monkey gang, especially when he has two stacks on you. Level one stacks on monkey aren't that threatening, though. Hey, it's all that damage just to kill a courier, though, and it's kind of risky because you might not get it. Oh, I see what they're doing now. So the Lesh is just going to kind of walk with the, the axe. And just, and like he might miss it. this wave, though, especially since he's... No, he's got it. It's close. It's close. But yeah, Donger can't really do anything except look awkward. Yeah, he's... I mean... He's doing all right. Oh, yeah. God, Doggo. <laughs> Stun a bit off. I think uh, Shrek might fall a bit low, but he's still gonna salve, so he'll be a okay. Oh, let me turn on last hits. Uh, bottom. This is good. No, Monkey King's actually getting all this life steal though. Yeah. And yeah, I mean now the the shoes on the other foot. You're you're splitting XP if you're radiant, but Kunka is getting solo XP now. So. Oh no! Oh, he went for it. He's dead. Oh, well, and it's probably not somebody you want to give a kill early on either. He went for the courier. See, if Slark would have listened to you, he would have died there. Earlier. Right. You're absolutely right. I'm not sure what that was. Oh, was he farming? Oh, uh, questionable play. Hmm. <clears throat>
But I mean, I guess you don't feel bad. Oops, I just missed that. Oh, they just straight up killed him. Well, bottom seems like they're winning. Top, it feels pretty even. But again, yeah, if, you, if you're Donger, you're like, I'm getting solo XP. Kunkka heavily reliant on that. Not too bad. Although Doggo might just die right now. Especially if he hits the torrent. Yep. One more hit should do it. He needs to get the... Ooh, nice yep. Run, especially with that attack range, I feel like Dash is just going to fall, though. Especially one more spin. Nope, doesn't even need it. <laughs> Donger goes for the kill, and then he goes right back to farm because he's like, I'm not fucking with this yeah, guy. But he's missed two waves. Or two creeps. This axe is rich. This is like, this is like 70 I8. He's... Eh. Dash could potentially kill him now, I think. For the blink. He's got some pretty ridiculous regen, especially with the D ward. That is big. Very, nice. Very good obs ward, too. There's no sentry to counter this right now. Yeah, Dash can't really approach this. And Donger is playing like the Naga was last game, where everybody just forgets about him. I don't even talked about bottom either. Uh, Martin's courier just died. Right? Like, it's, I don't know. Like, what? What is? What does this lane do? Exactly. Like, I mean, it's like, why did you pick the coddle for this lane? It, yeah. It's. You don't get too much benefit. Now they're like, oh, I'm gonna be kind of threatening. But you don't even have. I'm going you know. to be kind of threatening. Yeah, and that's all you are. You're just kind of threatening. Oh, here we go. This is this is huh? the uh, the overconfident night stalker play. Yeah, and he actually doesn't have any damage because Nolagon can just heal. No, yeah, exactly. But they don't really and have any catch. Really... Nolagon needs to heal. There he goes. I don't think he can really commit for this either. Who's gonna get it first? I think Guam is just gonna die. No. <laughs> I, you're probably happy with that though. King yeah. getting a lot of XP there. I guess. See what's going on top. It's probably whatever. They might kill off the axe finally. 1700 gold still in the bank, but he's got a naked ring of health. 12 HP regen. It's all that damage is coming straight back to him. His HP. I don't think Donger can keep going for this. He's got to hit the torrent, but I, Shrek what? able to dodge it. It actually hits the Leshrac. The shrine popped a little bit too early. This is where you ping your Leshrac if you're playing Axe. You're like, what are you doing? Screwing up his mojo. He, he, I mean, he's still half health. Especially, look at this man's HP regen. No, yeah, he's huge. He's fine. He paid him back with his Tango. It's all good. Dude. Is he actually? He's going. He's going blink first. Dude, is he actually going blink first? I hope so. This is a manly build. It's a very oh. manly build. He has oh, one level in the call. All right. He actually might get it, especially with the stun afterwards. Perfectly timed from Doggo, but the torrent. It might be on both of them. No, they don't have the damage though. They don't have the dunk. I would have died there. On the other hand, is a god. Donger close is a god. Knew he could TP there. Ooh. Where are these creeps coming from? What the fuck? <laughs> They're confused. I don't know why they were running at the ogre. That was weird. But Donger, he's being efficient with this. See how he farmed the neutral camp with the uh, Tidebringer there? Oh, God, dude, this mid lane is... Uh... I wouldn't call it a straight disaster, but like, Slark can just do this. Like, yeah, and there's really nothing Monkey King can do. No. I mean, you're so still sort of farming. They're drawing even in terms of CS. I just missed a kill. Bottom. Oh, top though. Donger's just getting gone on one more spin from his creeps and he's dead, but no. Doggo's gonna have to die for it, and I don't think he wants to. Actually, the Monkey King is just dead mid too. So, yeah, uh. He actually might have been able to turn there, but he stopped picking the slark. Wait, did he get his blink? Is that on the courier? Oh god, I keep forgetting side uh, side shots are dead, dude. Every single time. Yep, he's got blink now. So this is this is a weird maneuver where you go 
blink before boots. They're coming. He's just a very slow boy, but he's a very beefy boy. He's not that slow. He's not bad. Alright. He again. probably goes face boots. Oops. And that is just a dead Night Stalker because the rupture was used. Actually, goes for the kill onto the Kunkka, but there's no damage. He's not getting a single spin. There's only two supports up here. I mean, I don't think he dies. It, he got one spin there. If he gets like two more, it's feasible. I guess so. He might need some mana regen though, because this hero is uh, bleh. He might need some boots. Oh, Man, there we go. Maybe get some now. Ooh, PMS it Ooh, might there get. There we go. He doesn't have. He doesn't have old mana. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Wait, we got the shovel on somebody and Borman shield. I I didn't see who got the shovel though. I think it was the Bloodseeker. Nope. Poor man's shield on Monkey King is pretty legit. Yeah. All right. Uh, this Monkey King, it's not building correctly. Somebody got shovel, and they're actually just killing Guam again. They're trying to tilt Guam this game. That is definitely a strategy. Oh no! The jukes. Jump, I don't jump. even think he juked him. He just went for it. He misses the tree kill too. He broke this man's ankles. Couple of notes. Um, I don't understand why people don't max primal spring on monkey when you're like behind because the spell you can just farm with the spell it's quite good um, oh shit this um, dire outpost went Wait, towards good. dire or bottom outpost went towards dire they actually used the wyvern ult but i don't think they're really going to be able to follow it up with a kill can they kill soundproof the blood seeker is just so quick a nice turn from nolgon but guam is just going to fly off into the trees untouchable I'm gonna I think... fly into a corner and have to wait like 40 seconds to be out. Yeah, anyway. and he can't actually go at this outpost again either. He could have flown up. I think he definitely could have. Is he seriously just gonna wait for 30 seconds? Yes, he is. Oh, he's just chilling. Still trying to trade these outposts. This is gonna be two towards Radiant, but again, we got another four minutes until the next one pops. I mean, you're pretty happy if you're Bloodseeker this game, I feel like. 4 0 and 2 to start. Somebody got a shovel. Okay, Dash has the shovel. Let's see. Six seconds until he can use it again. It's getting dove under tower. The stun is going to miss from Doggo, but they just want to keep diving. The tower is going to fall in the middle of this, and the rest of his team is not here to help use the shovel. All the inefficiency. Donger going for the XTP. Ooh, play. I think that just came off cooldown too, but yeah, he's very dead. I think he wanted to come back into that one. Maybe they had somebody TPing. Nolgon? Nolgon? Uh, Nolgon? No, he's fine. He's got the okay. one. He's got the one. Maybe hunting for some kills. Got an early drums. Is it just me or just every single agi carry by drums this patch? Or maybe that's been every patch. Every patch, yeah. Oh, somebody got mango tree. Imagine being a monkey king in a tree and wanting to farm a camp and not using primal spring. <laughs> but dude, he can jump on the radiance mango tree now. Now that's 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 bad. That's yeah. If you if you don't want to play against Mango Tree, just pick Monkey King. Probably put that on suck, but yeah, they're actually just grouping up to take these tier ones now. And I mean that's pretty big tower to take. They've already taken the mid tier one. The map control is just slowly slipping away. And. I mean, compared to last game, this is completely the opposite. Just another stomp. Nice dive up. It's going to miss the leash, though. Might be able to bring down the ogre. 
And actually, Monkey King diving, he misses the Q, misses the stun. Martin just walks away. Able to pop the re the rupture onto the Monkey King, and they might get the turn with the Coddle. There's so much damage coming out. How did they kill off the Slark? That is huge. And with Guam flying out with the ult, they'll even get Nolagon. Okay. Let's see if okay. they can find Martin, too. They don't have any mana on the Monkey King, though, and he's got to be careful. Oh, <laughs> the axe! Coming in, dude. Blink axe kill, and you know, there's the turn. Let's see if they can actually bring down the axe afterwards. They do. Triple kill for Guam, Dago, DC. Holy shit, this Night Stalker is actually useful. This is surprising. Are we, uh, I'm surprised. Too. The Night Stalker is a good hero. Doesn't even have to be nighttime. I'm kind of surprised they lost that fight, though. I'm still not. I didn't really see how they killed off this Slark. He didn't get his drum charge off. Bloodseeker is going for a Maelstrom. All right, what's the best neutral item you've experienced so far? Um, can I say Aqualo? No, that's not. Wow. What it is. I think um, Spider Legs is honestly like super undervalued. I, I I don't think I've seen it once. Oh, it's so good. You 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 uh, you take it on like a a ranged carry that gets jumped on, and you can just get away from people. It's so good. I got it on a on a drow earlier today, and people just kept running at me, and I was just like, "Bye!" I'm just gonna like weave through just terrain. Press one and button press. and then walk right. away. It's so much move speed, just so good. I love it. I think it's really nice. Honestly, if they get it this game, they probably put it on the Night Stalker, and that hero is just unstoppable. But I mean, you probably put it on a core. Doggo back though, and Nolagon actually smoking to try and find some kills. He sees Donger. Is Donger actually gonna die here? They don't have a stun. There's the rupture. Is able to go for the TP. They have the ult in five seconds, but Donger doesn't have a TP. The nice double torrent is only that delaying is the inevitable. They don't have stunts. Nice pushback from Turtle King plus the X, and I think Donger's okay. They've gone too far. Nolagon is getting caught out, but the Slurk on the backside, Cueve, will bring down the Coddle. Especially with the alt there, the Monkey King jumping in, needs to be able to get his alt off, but the taunt, while he was in the tree, he was in the middle of them, but he couldn't follow up on the Nolagon. They get the return kill on the Daco, and I think they need to get out of this one. They can't keep fighting underneath, but Cueve jumping in, Dash has gone too far. Soundproof past the tier two. They don't even have the ult on the Bloodseeker anymore, but they can keep chasing Nolagon, popping the ult to stop them. But the stun, the oh, carries are right on top of each other. Cueve is out of mana, he's out of escape. They kill off the Monkey King, but at so much cost. Double kill for the Bloodseeker running away from this one. Martin. Needs to get away from the Night Stalker. It is nighttime though, and I think Nolagon is definitely dead for sure. The rupture, it's been so long, it's back off cooldown. Here comes Donger with the X and the Torrent. He can't stop Martin from getting the kill though. He will kill off the Wyvern. They might get the turn. <laughs> Martin stayed a bit too long, plus the X. The Torrent is there. The side is done, but he screwed up the Torrent. They don't get the kill. Doggo with the turn. Dogger with the big mistake, and I think that would have been guaranteed kill on to Martin. I think so. That's, uh, that's something you hate to see. Goddamn. I think pretty much everybody. No, the Bloodseeker and uh, Axe lived. No, wait, Axe died. Because he died underneath the tier 2. I think Bloodseeker was the only one to live, or did Wyvern live through that too? Um, I don't recall. No, Wyvern died to Donger. Oh my god, yeah. Soundproof, what do you do? There you go. And he fucked it up. <laughs> what? I could play a better Monkey King than this guy. And I'm like washed up. Come on. 
washed up Monkey King player or washed up player? Washed up player. <laughs> haven't. All right, all right, you just haven't finished as high in RD2L anymore. Haven't been on top of your game lately. Uh, I think Soundproof's gone too far again, too. He's not really spending that much time farming. They have the rupture. It's on the Guam, and I think it's the best target, but he could just hide in the trees. Doggo's going to fall, and that's a terrible way to start this fight. And I think we're pretty much dead even, although the game says 4K, but the nice ult... From the Wifford plus the Silence onto everyone. They try and kill off Guam. The call is there. It's on the three. The lockdown. They need to kill off Turtle King. They need to kill off Donger. I think Donger is the bigger kill. The Monkey King can't stop this one. He's getting the TP out. Oh. No one's got a Quelling Blade. Oh, I thought. I totally thought uh, the Bloodseeker had one. Not anymore. I checked his inventory. Weird little fights taking place all over, though. Like, that wasn't even around the, the five-minute mark. Oh, Eternal King's probably dead. Oh, no, he's actually popped the Q a bit too early. The pushback is going to be there with the TP. Is it enough? No. Axe has still got brown boots, by the way. I mean, I think it's fine. You don't need anything on Axe. You can totally he's... like save for phase or, so, or save for bots. Mm. Well, he's queued up the phase boots, which is a little weird. He also has a naked ring of health. Is that a thing? Um. Oh, that nice call mid. I think they might get the turn here, especially if they have the damage to heal really good, onto uh, the axe. Right. How to play the more than enough damage onto the monkey king? He's gone for the fight. He can't even buy back into this one. X back, I think Dash is just dead, trying to pop the salve, has to run past, but the Blinken, once again, there's the dunk from the Axe, and Guam is just in the wrong neighborhood. He really showed up so late to the fight. The tip! Uh-oh. The, the, the self-team tip, that's not very good. Uh, it's not great when your own team is trying to also tilt Guam. But yes, naked ring of health. Uh, I don't think I've seen that. I think it was his first item too. What does that even build into? I guess he goes Vanguard maybe? He could get a pike too. He could buy... Yeah, either one's good. I think he has uh, items to build into Crimson. Uh, oh no, actually, it's different now. You don't need Buckler anymore. Yeah. I mean, just trade the Buckler for the Dragon Scale, pretty much. Oh, it's the same amount of armor, but you get the HP regen. Nether Shawl on Soundproof. I mean, Monkey King's fine with the minus armor, right? It, oh, he doesn't really need the spell damage, though. It's the primal spring you benefit from, but it's really not that much. Actually, it's... Yeah, yeah it's okay. The magic Reg is probably the best, especially magic into the... Quite good, actually. They don't have a ton of physical damage on Radiant side. They're quite well split. So I could see... Especially yeah. later down the line. He has good agi game. Oh yeah, he's still got 10 armor with it, but I think if they find the Coddle first to start this fight, but he's got the ult off already, Nolagon has to just focus onto the orb, able to get the kill. That's 100 gold. USS Guam is getting turned on with the Rupture, but the ult again. I think it's only delaying because they don't have the inevitable Quiff just gets demolished. They don't have the magic damage to follow it up, but can they kill him after this heal? No, the call, the save. They don't even kill the Slark. He got so low, but they've killed off two heroes on the backside. The Wyvern as well as the Leshrac. And now Shrek just sacrificed his life for the Slark. King... Martin running back in. I think he wants to get out of here, though. Look at how fast this boy is. Holy shit. 770 there. 
It's playing Weaver. Dude, I love how the animation just pretty much glitches out once you start going <laughs> yeah, too fast. It's so good. I'm quite surprised he didn't go um, Radiant though. On blood. Uh, it's still uh, the magic or the Maelstrom helps him farm. I guess he could have gone it after that. No, I mean, I think you buy a Maelstrom and you sort of signify I'm not going it. I think that's mm. what that item tells me. So I'm not sure. All right, this Imp Claw is probably the most underwhelming neutral item. I wouldn't even swap my wand out for it. Really? I mean, no, plus 24 damage and a crit every uh, eight seconds. Oops, I just missed a kill. Yeah, I don't know. I think wand is. <laughs> I used to like really undervalue wand, but the item you can you can just save yourself a lot and. It's also just a source of regen. But this this Imp Claw, it just gives you a little bit of damage. That's kind of all it is. Like, it's good. It's like one of those things where, like, I'll take it if I get it and I have a slot. But, like, the passive is 8 seconds. Yeah, the like, cooldown's super more. long. It just feels underwhelming. Yeah, and it's a super underwhelming crit, too, only 130. Yeah. Like, if they buffed it where it's, like, every four seconds, then it'd be, like, okay, Didn't they... Just... They nerfed it, right? It used to be that short. I thought it was, anyways. Oh, they're actually gonna try and kill the Bloodseeker bottom, too, and he has no BKB to get out of this one. He is for sure dead. Oh, Nolagon TP down, though. As well as the Slark, I think Nolagon is for <laughs> sure gonna die. Look at them just walking through the trees. Nobody cares that the trees are there. He could have forced himself there. He held it for some reason. Oh, Grove Bow on Wyvern in this game is actually pretty sick. Yeah, actually, it's not bad. Easily able to turn on that orb. Plus 10 attack speed, too. Yeah, actually, that's quite good for Wyvern. You get the extra attack speed with the Q, and then the magic amp is not bad. You just get it on everybody. Because that's, that's what you try to do with the Arctic Core anyway. Uh, are they trying to go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or like in between. No, I think he's fine. Anyways, as you were saying, the Slark. The Slark has a wand, and he got out because he has a wand. He has mana for stuff. Like he, he was at like twenty mana and he used it, and he's fine. He was just getting chased by yeah. the Yeah, and I mean Martin actually sold off his wand to keep that Imp Claw too. Yeah. Oh. Bloodseeker. That's question. Questionable for sure. What? Unless he he could have dropped the the item that gives you the wand, which I forget the name of, but. <sighs> is he able to run forward? They go for it. This seems like a weird smoke because the outposts are already gone, especially with the bounties being gone too. They're really trying to find something in the enemy jungle, but they might have. I think they spotted it. I think they were looking for a pick into Roche. Um, yeah, they, they were quite close to it there, so I think that's a good inclination. Yeah, well, I they spotted it with this board too. That's why they backed from it. Yeah, that makes sense. Some good wards from Dyer here. Yeah, their their vision does seem pretty strong. It is what we're expecting, especially with the Night Stalker Coddle. All of the times you get all the vision. Turtle King's gonna be first one spotted though. The Slark high ground, but Slark is again. You're in the wrong neighborhood now. You do not want to be here. Even with your ult, you're just getting stunned up. It doesn't even matter that turn. Are you kidding me? You can't even oh. get out of the Monkey King ult. I I feel like they really got to stop rupturing Glom too, because he just goes high ground or into the trees and nobody can kill him. They just get the turn. Doggo's gonna die. They can't get out of this one. The rupture is really just wasted yet again. I think they really need to use it on the Monkey King. They get the call onto the Monkey King. He's getting a little bit of damage, but Guam's just running forward with that Night Stalker. This is what he's good at. He can just run at you, and he wants to keep going, too. I kind of do think that rupturing the Night Stalker is not a bad thing. It's not a great thing, but it sort of forces him to stay still. 
which means but, your slark is kind of free to run around. Yeah, but I feel like you probably want to use that on Monkey King, right? Like Monkey King benefits the most from being mobile. Night Stalker can easily live it. Obviously, he's not running down your heroes then, but... I mean, unless you rupture the Monkey King in his ult, then it's, like, he's not going to want to leave anyway. So it's redundant that way. Yeah, I guess that's but true. For the most part, I can see a, a use there. It's just they're not getting kills off of using that ability, though, which I feel like is the biggest detriment yeah. right now. No, you're absolutely right. Oh, Quave does not want to walk high ground. <laughs> they might be able to get the blink call, but Guam is going to be the first one running forward. Does have the eggs. Oh, I haven't seen Dash use the shovel yet. There we go. Nice bounty rune. You watch the game where uh, Envy just uses a, a shovel in the middle of a team fight, right? What? No. As an alchemist, he he finds a bounty rune in the middle of a team fight. And you gotta get that efficiency. That's fucking sick. <laughs> I mean, worst case, you get a kobold, and then you somehow deny yourself with a kobold. That's next level. But yeah, Donger is getting pretty big now. He's got a 10 second BKB. And it's really just, it's gotten to the point where I don't know where Radiant's damage is coming from. The Slark can get easily kited, especially with the Coddle there. Also got the Ogre as well. He's got a BKB now. Wait, how does... How does spell immunity work again now? Isn't the damage I, goes through, but you don't get stunned? I I don't fucking know, man. Pierce's spell immunity. I think it, like, you can cast it, but it doesn't do anything? That would make sense. That was, like, the most confusing change, I think. Hold on. Let's control F it on the patch notes. It's all the way at the top. Spell immunity no longer grants 100% magic res. This means that all spells that are able to pierce spell immunity now deal damage as well. Oh. So this Wait, would be something what? sort of like where you have um, Venge at 25 with the magic missile pierces spell immunity talent. I think in that case the damage also yeah, I think they changed the wording on that, too, to fit that. This change means that if something pierced immunity before that and was magical damage, it will now do damage. If it doesn't pierce spell immunity before, it will still not deal any damage. Okay. So this would also include things like bashes, or bashes I don't think did damage before. Is a bash a magical damage? I think so. Like uh, bash. I guess we can check it. Oh, stun damage change from magical to physical. So it doesn't oh. actually matter. Well, that's great. Uh, but I, well... Oh, oh there we go. There we go. There <laughs> we go. Dude, you don't need it on Night Stalker. I feel like you put it on, uh... You put it on Monkey King or something. Yeah, you, yeah, you give it to... I think... I don't know who you give it to, actually. Oh my god, that turn rate, dude. Look at his turn rate. Oh my god. Yeah, he he gives it to uh, Donger, which I think is pretty good. Wait, you knock down trees, too? What? Oh yeah, when you when you come back down. Oh, wow. oh, we're actually missing a kill. They're actually, they're fighting in Roche. I'm not sure how the Coddle got caught here, but that's a big kill to start it. They also lose Dash. The support's getting caught out. How was there so many mangoes here? What the? I think there's a mango tree. Somewhere. I'm not sure where it's at, but they got baited by their own mango tree. <laughs> no, they got baited by the enemy team's mango tree that they placed there. Okay. I see what's happening, but the turn, the buyback is there from the Kato, but in comes the BKBZ. He's trying to kill off Doggo. This is a very nicely placed Monkey King ult. 
Slark's fine just railing into um, a coddle as well as the Monkey King right now. And there's so much damage coming out. The double buyback. Axe needs to TP in this one. On the front side is Guam. He's taking a lot of damage though. So he can't get the blink off. They need to keep this Axe locks down. He can't get his call off. The Monkey King is so far forward. But look at the stats on this Slark. He can just turn completely. But Dogger has now rotated over. He's still got his BKB. Quip is going to die. Your stats don't matter to me. Plus the X onto the Axe. It's a complete disaster. This is two buybacks spent. Ultra kill for Dogger the God. That's Dogger with a G for God. Oh my goodness. I don't even think he needed the spider legs there. I'm surprised they're not going for Roche though, but I guess you just back up. You don't take Roche too quickly. You don't take building too quickly either. So. Yeah, they. Uh, well, the catapult dies, which kind of sucks, but. You still take it pretty quick. It's not too bad. And another bounty rune, too. Holy crap. Blink away, they pop the rupture, and I believe. We're, who got ruptured? What? Who did he rupture? Oh, well, they, they lose dash, but I'm not. I, I heard it come out, and then it's on cooldown, and I'm not sure what happened with that. Oh, this Slark trying to go on a Guam, but there's not enough damage for this. It's not even close. He has to use ult. He's also got BKB if they want to keep chasing, but do you want to keep chasing? He's going to have to use the BKB to get out of this. Yep, and <laughs> the Torrent actually going to hit the Bloodseeker on the way out. And Donger able to pop the Spider Legs. He's just popping BKB. Cueva is out of his ult. I don't think he wants to be here. He's so low. They cannot fight this. Oh, the no. ult is already oh. wasted. Noligoth only hit it on one. Donger walks into it on accident, but it doesn't matter. They can just keep running out. Doggo is going to die. One more hit. They lose everything. They've gone too far. They tried fighting under the shrines. They're on the wrong side of the map. Martin's going to be the next one to fall. The X from Dogger. The spider legs pop so he can just run high ground or low ground, sorry, and grab the rune. Axe is going to die too. I, I think they just got a little bit overzealous. They didn't have the rupture, but they thought they could still fight, especially with Slark having alt and BKB up. Wait, what does Monkey King eggs do again? Oh yeah, I remember. Same thing as like Quinta egg. Very weird, not actually creative. But... Yeah, it's kind of boring. It is pretty annoying to play against, I guess. But he's not using it correctly. Doesn't it just spawn them randomly? Yeah, he does. It, 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 but like. You can just leave them at camps. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you just run around to each camp and then wait yeah, till they spawn, you, pretty much. Like, leave camps half farmed. And then you go around. It's a little bit faster. See, Kyle agrees with me. Affirmative. I mean, the BKB. I feel like the BKB charge is coming. Oh, what is this actually? Mindbreaker? The next attack silences. Okay, well, I mean, Cueva has to pop the BKB. He has the ult again, too, but the BKB used a bit too early, I think. No, he's fine. He's able to walk out. The X is over onto Doggo. Does Donger want to keep going for this? There's no way for Doggo to get out, but I don't think they want to dive high ground into those tier threes. They heal the call on the back lines. It's onto two, but he didn't get any spins, so the damage isn't really there. He has to pop the rusher on the Guam again, keeping him in caught. Guam is gonna fall. I think he's taking a couple tower charges. He can't walk anymore. The pushback is there. Guam has to walk out of this silence, but he walked into it. Guam is dying, but the rest of his team is able to clean up all the enemy heroes. The buyback needs to be there from the Bloodseeker. They've killed off the axe. The mid barracks are gone. And they can easily enter through there. The spider legs getting him to the low ground. This item is so good. That cooldown is insane, though. Ten yeah, seconds. Spider legs is quite a strong item. 
Spider leg seems a bit too good. I feel like that's the next item to get nerfed, at least slightly. Doggo almost falling, and I don't think he wanted that heal. The ship coming in, it's actually the squad of ships. Doggo throwing it high ground. Uwebe has to run away. I think Doggo's just too caught too far out, though. Soundproof able to clean him up. A buyback there. They could keep going, but the Axe is spawning another five seconds. I think now you go take Roche for sure. You have to take that shrine. Now we're gonna get the bounty runes. Well, at least we didn't get a stomp. It, although it still feels like one team has been in control the entire game, and that's dire. I don't, I don't think so. I think Radiance had quite a good time. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm totally wrong. The, the, the net worth graph is actually kind of mountainy. Toad built up an 11k gold lead at around 20 minutes, and now it's down to 20k for Dire. Where is this mango tree, dude? There's no mango tree, they just they broke it. And they just left the mango. Oh, they haven't picked up the mangoes, okay. Are you sure? Where's this thing going? I I don't know. That was weird. But maybe this is like the strat where you like you leave a bunch of trash in the roach pit, so it's really hard to pick up the Aegis. Oh. Well that's actually a huge kill. There's no buyback. And I mean, oh, they just want to keep know. going. Oh, yeah. There's no stopping. They're just fighting all the time now. Soundproof got ruptured, but it's not going to matter. They have to walk away with the BKB. Doggo can't run away from this one. The orb is too strong for Doggo. I like how Donger's just popping the spider legs pretty much on cooldown now. Yeah, there's no reason not to. It's so good. Yeah, it definitely feels like this game, like this is it. They're just hitting barracks through back door. Look how easily this is dying. Mm -hmm. And the next top lane is it. I'm a little surprised they didn't fort there because they probably could have gotten the, at least saved one of the racks. It really feels like Radiant hasn't had control over the outposts for a while. No, the Axe is playing very aggressive right now, but where's the rest of his team? They don't have the damage there. He's too far out. It's 3v1. He's sitting there asking for his team. Glove gets ruptured, and uh, there's really no follow-up unless he finds him in the trees. Martin able to pop BKB. In comes the Slark. Cueve wants to find this kill on the Glove. He walks himself to death. A little bit too much. Wyvern has to buy back as well as the Night Stalker. Guam wants to get back into this one. It is nighttime, so they can keep fighting. The call is there on the Monkey King, but it's only on the two. They've lost Dash. If they can get out of this, this is really big. Not a disaster of a fight. They've gotten two oh, kills. Spider legs. A spider legs being popped yet again, but the stun misses. There's the X. There's no BKB left, and Martin is just caught out. He's got the Manta. I think he might be able to walk out, but the slow from the Monkey King ult, it's too much. Quive is now oh, no. caught off the backside. He got silenced without a BKB. A hundred seconds without your cores. Eighty seconds on this Slark. Soundproof. He wants this game to be over. I think he knows it's over too. There is no way for them to come back. The X call on the three. It doesn't even matter. He didn't even call because he he blinked into the Night Stalker silence. Oh my. <laughs> Dude, I hate when that happens. The the buyback from Slark, he actually had it. Looks like it was just short on the gold, but soundproof diving the fountain. No ult on Slark. It doesn't even matter. GG. We get a one-one series. Well, no, I'll take it. No, it's one-one. Oh no, it is two zero. Was soundproof playing the Naga last game? Uh, I don't know, but Donger Close was playing Tiny in that team one. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think Soundproof was playing the Naga last game. But yeah, what a patch, dude. Mm -hmm. What a patch. That's that's a good way to sum this up. <laughs> I mean, the game is like, definitely more interesting to watch now. I feel like there's more stuff going on. It does feel like it's more dumbed down than it used to be. Because like, there's very clear objectives in the game now mm -hmm. compared to like in previous iterations of Dota where it's kind of like obscure what you really have to fight over. 
sure if it's a good or a bad thing. Um, I think... I don't know. There's there's more to do, which is cool. I like that. Dude, it is like so stressful playing now, though. You have to like constantly watch the clock when you play now. Oh, yeah. All right, anyways, very good performance from Trap Waifus, the degenerates themselves, Guam 2-0 on his return. Any any final thoughts, Zephyr? Um, uh, something, something, imagine picking Slark into Night Stalker, all you will. Hey, the, the Coddle Night Stalker won the game. Coddle Night Stalker, good god. <laughs> all right, I hope the combo works. GG's.